very right. difficult to leave a situation like that, but he did it because he felt it was the best for him. All right, guys, we have the audio fixed up. Both teams are ready and raring to go, and we are into champion select. Oh, yeah. That Karthus will not see play. The Shen was also in this last game, so we'll see if he gets banned out too. Well, there we go. No Karthus. That's a sad day for Echo. Yep. I really wonder if they're going to ban Twisted Fate, and the answer is yes. <laughs> so there's no more Echo with Twisted Fate. Echo had jumped out to a couple leads on TF, and it's smart that Curse has decided to ban that away. And a, a lot of things that NK Inc. has been playing lately, not a lot, but he played Evelyn here and there, and it's been huge for them. He usually goes up two or three kills, has a hand in first blood, but it doesn't seem like the team can synergize behind it as it gets mm -hmm. to mid to late game. It's often banned as well. So yeah. I th actually think if Eve, Eve gets through, there's a really good chance that we're going to see NK Inc. on Eve. NK Inc. was playing Eve during Velocity's comeback win. Mm -hmm. The last time these teams played against each other, it's very threatening for him. And I like Curse's bans mainly targeting Echo because so many people have been targeting Vile Rose lately. And he's right. actually been responding fairly well. And it's Echo who's been running away with games. Smart to go for. I could see this becoming a Velocity, not poke comp, but more of that range comp. Maybe an Ari or a Lux back for Echo. We haven't really seen him since, I think, his mm -hmm. first play here for us. He play, put Lux He's a good in Ari there. Player. Very good Ari player as well. And we haven't seen the Nidalee as much anymore. I loved that last spring Gone. when there were just the spears <laughs> coming out of everywhere. But nonetheless, we may get a Jarvan locked in. I believe Boy Boy has taken that to him by himself to the top lane as well. As we get swapped around, smiles on the faces of all the teams as they decide with the pick. I got a little happy when I saw the victor, <laughs> and then I realized that it was not real. It's not Nick Wu. There's no way we're going to see a victor. We're going to see Boy Boy not play victor. Even though victor top lane, yellow augment, you get all that move speed, they're going to pick Jarvan. Damn it. It's all right. We all can right. dream. So they do lock in Jarvan. Again, that kind of pick we have seen go both places. Vile Rose looks to get his pick, though. Rumble first. Yeah, that's something he did not expect. And if we know Vile Rose... He saw it on his face. He's yeah. like, all right, cool. Wow, I get to pick this guy. I, could, <laughs> I have my choice of Rumble or Kale. What do I do? And he just decided to pick Rumble because that's the more traditional top lane champion. That's bold move by Curse. Void going to have to pick something that can attack it. Oriana, wow. Quickly not locked in by Nijak. He's had a little bit more play on that lately as well. We'll see what Saint decides to lock in here as he's... Kind of, they don't really have to show anything in their cards here. They can just mm -hmm. pick a support. Yesterday, Nijaki had the sneaky carry against COG because everyone was kind of looking at Cop and thinking how he's going to be crazy. And quietly in the background was this hyper-farmed Oriana with 300 CS and like 4-0. and So he's been silently crushing on Oriana. And those are, once again, getting the Twitch away from Maple Street. Very important. That's going to be big. Cop on his Twitch. Coming up for Velocity, 16, 6, and 12 in the past two games versus them, so he's already got his killer right there. That is a very powerful pick for them, and if this Anivia actually gets locked in for Echo, it's another one of his comforting champions. Anivia or Ari or Lux are probably the three most played there for Echo. I Going forgot up about his Anivia, that's right. Yeah, he used to just love it, but he never played it that much on Team Marn because it didn't really mesh with their right. style. Not at all. But he's so new into this Velocity team, maybe they've been working on something. Double AP, lots of persistent damage if they can go with Rumble. You can use your Nivy wall to wall people into an Equalizer. But because he hasn't locked it in yet, I'm probably just talking for no reason. They have the crowd control. Yep. He know Maybe he wants to see what else they're going to bring to the table. He wants to see where everything is going first. So they play it safe. They show a little bit, but they'll be all right. That, that jerk. <laughs> <laughs> so deep into the tog chain, Lee Sin. Yeah, I, I, we learned this. You don't talk about things until they've been locked in here. What is with this Zach Jarvan combo? If picked again, it's, it's really good. Oh, uh, we've seen. Let's bounce inside <laughs> the cataclysm right now and just dong dong over the, over and over again. Ooh, it ever should go with Nami once again. Yesterday he had the perfect support game. 0-0-16, zero, 100% zero, kill participation, and just wrecked with Twitch. You land one bubble. And that's a kill for Cop. They they should absolutely go with this again. Evaniscus looking to pick up the last one, and we've seen that Zach doing so good in the top lane as they hover for velocity here, waiting on that pick. Of course, he decided to go for Ari, but we saw <laughs> Zach last game against Kiwi Kid. That was Nian, and it's just the blobs allowed him to stay in lane so much. It makes it a really hard lane. You don't have to send the jungler up there. It's incredibly difficult to work against his Rumble because, first off, Rumble based off the heat system, can only get out like so much harassment. He can't like expend his, mm -hmm. expend himself down and like burst you out unless you get caught on everything. And since Spirit Visage is a core item for Zac, they may or may not swap this and we could end up talking for no reason anyway because right. Jarvan and Zac can swap. But because Spirit Visage is a core item for Zac, it just naturally builds in 
to the counter from a bunch of magic resist, increased healing to just make his little blob pieces even more effective. That could very well be a great pick for Curse if they swap it back. This is Velocity really putting all their eggs in one basket for the crowd control in the bottom lane with Varus and Thresh. If they're not present in a fight or in that mid game where lanes start to roam, they could actually not have a good time in those fights. It's going to be a They'll very... They'll be missing a lot of CC. Yeah, very trying game for them. The swap was made. Voiboy mm. is Zach in the top lane, Jarvan in the jungle, just like last game, actually. See what Velocity can do. Last time we saw Velocity playing, or yesterday, I should just say, versus Cloud9 for our first match of the day in Week 7. They were up three to zero, and then we mm -hmm. said it was that dragon that they kind of, you know, being up three to zero, they were kind of getting hyphy, as Boy Boy would say, and they're like, let's take this, and that's kind of a position they weren't in. And we saw in the spring split positions that teams haven't been in, they falter way more than not. So we'll see yes. if they can kind of hold their own there and still keep their feet grounded if they get a lead. And even though Velocity is four and fourteen here, they have been winners of the early game frequently. It's the trend, yeah. it's the mid game where they seem to struggle the most. If they make it out of the mid game with a lead, even if they're slow to finish, we haven't seen Velocity have huge leads late and then get come back on. Like, we actually have seen a few times from Curse. The mid game is actually going to be the key of this one, most likely. And again, they have the early, right? They have that lease in. You got the Rumble ulti to come at six, but after that, we're going to have to see if they can continue it because a lot of these guys having that caster as the AD carry may fall off towards the very late end of the game against that cop's twitch. So we see Curse and Velocity now onto the rift for our second matchup of the day here. We'll see what both these teams can do for a level one. Little bit of defensive line being played by Velocity right now, even though they're the ones with the Thresh who potentially has the level one edge, but because Curse is brute forcing in with five, they're gonna get their wards where they want them. They're just not gonna be able to do it sneakily. See NK Inc. landing that sonic wave, making sure they have nice vision. And they make it, oh no, I thought they were gonna see, have to see what Velocity Echo picked up. He actually hasn't chosen, uh, taken a skill yet, so they could have got a charm attack there, but no positioning, and both teams are really dancing this one out. Curse is going to hatch this ward as they walk over it just below Velocity. And Velocity may be wanting to go in for a Ooh. fight here if they land any kind of hook, but they didn't. Because you could actually see Valrose has charged up into his danger zone with his flame spitter. So if they would have landed any kind of hook, that would have been a whole heap load of damage. He could have put it out on everyone from Curse. That was a real nice piercing arrow as well. Fate Maple Street hitting four of them all together. So if you were looking for the area of effect off that, he would have had it. But no engage once again. The team's really just seeing what the first few pitches are here before they take a swing. Wow, and I just need to point this thing out because I was checking out Valrose's danger zone. With the Dorn Shield start, he has 34 ability power at level 1, so his rune page is what? full of ability power right now, which means he's gone without much magic resist for that. He's gone ability power blues and quints. Oh boy, boy, oh, getting no. locked up. They do the 3 invade. The passive will be popped here. Will Saint have what he takes, and it looks like he is going to stay up from that as well, so he saves the passes for lane. It's still going to be a steal from the blue yes. here, which is incredibly potent. Wait a minute. Okay, it's it's a steal for the blue, but St. Fitch still has some time to counterplay it. Boy Boy getting away without actually popping his passive is going to be a huge boon for him later. We're going to have to see what they can do in this top lane. It looks like NK Inc. will just go back into his uh, his red buff here. It does not look like they will try to give Boy Boy more pressure. That flash being down means Boy Boy's got to play a little careful. As Edward starts to go to the bottom lane, Cop finds himself up seven or four CS right now. And we can actually see Valrose doesn't even care about the lane. He knows that there's going to be a Jarvan coming to take a buff back, essentially negating the invade mm -hmm. by NK Inc. because they have just traded buffs here and Saints taking the blue back. And we do see that NK Inc. actually puts a little bit of that pressure towards the top side. You guys didn't get the passive last time, so this could be scary. Voiboy Boy does not have flash, so it makes it an even more dangerous gank. And there is almost no potential for anyone to come help him here. I think Voiboy just has to give this one up. He's got good positioning, at least for himself. He's playing it safe, they say. I think somebody's gonna be up here. They looks like they're going again, fast turret. We do see the 3v1s in the lanes, and this is what we should expect. So we know these guys are gonna be trading mm -hmm. turrets right off the start. They waited for the cannon minion wave, knowing that the turret is gonna take a longer time to be taken down. There's not much either team could do about this unless they put the jungler up to stop it and make a 3v2, or if they roam the mid laner over. 
We saw this happen a little bit last time. It's not a Yi in middle this time. It is that Ari. So they're going to be able to fight a little bit better. And that lane is going 19 to 17. Doran's here for Echo. He likes to double Doran start in that lane to keep the wave clear going. And is the HP man up. And this is the question that we have to answer every time we see a turret swap. Yeah. What does the team do directly after that? Apparently Ooh. just catch Vile Rose. Oh, Vile Rose walks right into the team. St. Vicious is already on the other side. It looks like First Blood may be coming in here. And it is Vile Rose going to cop. And I love how everyone waited for Cop to trigger his expunge because they knew that was a kill secured and they trust him to carry getting those kills. Hopefully they don't think... Okay, they know they're not going to lose Dragon on this one. There is going to be some pressure though, but Velocity is not going as hard as I thought they would in this top lane, trying to go for the second turret with losing Vile Rose there. At this point, they got half the turret and they're just going to stay up here because they know they have a little bit more time. I think staying okay. any later creates a very dangerous situation for Maple Street and Eveniscus, which is why they decided to back away. Cop farming this one up, and with all this roaming around and whatnot, Maple Street has found himself somehow, after being 4 CS down, is a good 5, 6, 7 CS up. We'll see if he can keep that going in the top lane in this 2v1. Cop now to back. Everybody is going to look for that first dragon soon as they were already, already pressured to it. Exactly. Cop got the kill with the roaming, whereas Maple Street was yep. just constrained to the lane, so he was trying to make it up in mm -hmm. farming. I think the Nijaki versus Echo lane is the only matchup we've really had because 3v1s can't necessarily be considered as, as matchups where someone can outplay when they just run back away from the turret. And Nijaki, I feel like, is outplaying that right now since Jackie got peeled away to the blue buff early on in the game when St. Ficious was needing some extra help to go get that. So he actually has been playing from an experience disadvantage against Echo and hasn't let it affect his farm. A lot of today has really been soft pressure on the mid. Both mid still with their summoners up for very long. Even their engagements in a 1v1 hasn't been so much. It's odd to see, not odd, but interesting to see that all this pressure on the side lanes causes for turrets and not as much fighting. Cop now to the mid lane. Few attacks onto Echo, but here is NK oh no. Inc. on the backside. The cripple's down, but the finish, or follow up rather, is not there. And we're at least seeing Velocity make some pretty solid strategic choices here, really. They're pushing the bottom lane really hard with three because they see Void Boy is trying to freeze the other side of the map, which is why both the top and bottom lanes are together trying to make something happen. Not much of a gold lead here, so these fights are really just based on what abilities have been leveled right now. Going back, you see Evanis is taking quite a bit of damage. Nijak, he's out of mana though, so he's going to have to be careful here. Forces the flash on that, which actually is big if he goes back to mid, but it looks like Cop and Edward are now faced off against Echo. Jackie was actually going to have to go back that wave anyway because right. he was out of mana. It was just a very close kill, and getting the Summoner spell out means NK Inc. specifically will be able to be more aggressive in that lane if he can get a war jump once he's level 6 on Lee Sin. And so Echo being stopped from roaming here. We do see that Nijaki tried to make a few moves, but this was really in protection and defense. St. Vicious is now trying to do it in this lane. They're not getting too much damage onto the turret, but it looks like they will be able to take it down, as well as Boy Boy pushing in the top lane, trying to get that gold back, but he's going to be met with Vile Rose. See, even though Velocity is down the one kill to zero, they play the early game well. They definitely have these strategies mapped out early on, and it's working out for them here as long as Vile Rose can hold this against Boy Boy, which I don't see any reason why he wouldn't. Trade back and forth isn't really in anybody's favor there as it's going to be Void Boy healing up and Viro shielding most of the damage. Echo on the charm, but again, they get close. They're caught in an antsy position here, and Echo's forced to use the last Spirit Rush to get out of that situation. But that was a level 7 versus a level 4, and both walked away flashing red. Obviously, Edward couldn't use his ultimate because mm. it wasn't up yet, but that wasn't a bad thing for Cop and Edward. Landing the bubble created an opportunity and forced Echo to go all in for a kill. A lot of early roaming going on in this game. The lanes have pretty much been stopped already. A, quite a crazy and a, a game requiring adapting for these yeah. teams. It's not slow, even though it looks like it could be yeah. for one and zero. There's definitely been a lot of fighting here, and that would that was a interesting dragon choice. Basically, Velocity was fact checking Curse's wards since they had a pink kind All of right. inside the dragon pit, but it wasn't seeing the ward in the brush that Curse had which is why they just recognized Curse moved towards it and got out of there. A big push on this mid lane. It actually looks like oh, they will send defense to it with that wave coming up. We see Vile Rose coming in from the top lane here as it's already pressured. These guys are trying to find something. It's everybody kind of just milling about. Nobody, they know what to do, but it just kind of seems like they don't know where to do it. Right now, the farm is still pretty close. Mm -hmm. Because Voiboy was able to freeze that lane, 
in exchange for Velocity getting the bottom turret. That's why Void Boy seems so far ahead of Valros in minion kills. Velocity is okay with that though, especially with Rumble. He's the one champion that everyone who plays Rumble says, even if I don't get my farm, between level 6 and 11, my ultimate's still crushing people. I'll yep. get the farm later. They'll catch up. And that's what Velocity is kind of keying on. Everyone talks about don't team fight Rumble the Dragon between 12 and 16 minutes or 12 and 18 minutes, and that's exactly what Velocity will want to force soon. I'm going to say this might be a red buff and a dragon attempt, but Vile Rose starts to head top. I think, oh, I figured rather after hitting six, they would get that equalizer down to the dragon area. But again, they don't want to lose Dragon for a turret at this point. They are up a turret, so they're just kind of trying to hold that advantage and gain Dragon with it. Yeah, there's so many wards in that area, as you mentioned. Double Thorns for Echo. The builds aren't quite there yet. I have to say, Cop has a slight item edge on a Maple Street, but he has to be very careful with his positioning in these fights since everyone is still so squishy this early on in the game. You can see the wards in mid as well. Saint was just sitting on that one. They were not allowed to get the gank. He returns to his jungle, still picking up his buffs as well. So it looks like Jackie did not get his. Not that he needs it, but he's been in the bottom lane farming it out. And an interesting Madrid's Razor choice by NK Inc. Oftentimes we've seen jungle Lee Sins sometimes just start a Dorn's Blade or just go straight for a Sight Stone. But NK is deciding to farm a little bit more on Lee Sin and instead going for pink wards and green wards instead of just rushing that side stone. So they're looking for objective control, but they haven't been able At to activate it At least early objective control, yeah. because it's actually... Sight stone is a fighting item for Lee Sin for yep. the most part. And if you can get into it early, it's actually very beneficial for the style of Lee Sin that we see in competitive, which is tank, initiator, try to kick the priority target back. So with what seems like a slow game, it has been. Ten and a half minutes in, we don't have anybody reaching the 100 minute mark at all, which would be with the next minute or so. 84 on to Cop is going to be the highest in the game as they finally do throw for that Dragon. We'll see how this Modric plays in. Well, it was the fresh pink ward that NKN could mm -hmm. actually just picked up. So going for objective control, getting objective control, and Voivoy maybe getting Ooh. a turret back. Really, Curse is relying a little bit on Voivoy getting farmed for all the things they're giving up to Velocity right now. It's quite a tanky turret in the top lane. Losing mid for this one may be bad, and you can see Voivoy already backing off. If Velocity overcommits uh -oh. here, Curse is going to flank all around them. We have St. Vicious and Voivoy in the back. They might be able to catch Velocity in a fight here. There's oh, the link from the left side. Edward gets caught out. He gets charmed as well and exploded. St. Vicious, I think he was doing wraiths in the back, which took them so long to get here. Velocity throws back the chain of corruption. The crowd control is perfect coming from the bottom lane here. Evanis gets on the back side. The support's getting focused, but that leaves the ADs to do damage. But Cop was in the back doing more than the rest. And it looks like he's helping to come out on top of that fight. Oh, actually, it's one to one. One for one. That was a very close fight there. Curse would have had an edge if they were able to all arrive at the same time because of the way they collapsed and the timing of the initiation from Edward slash getting initiated on that happened to Edward when he got hit by the death sentence. The fight just became scattered. I have to say that is a trade for both teams. Then you just have to look at who the kills went down to and I think Cop getting a kill would be slightly better than Echo. See where they continue off of this. Not too much was pushed. It was definitely a scuffle between both teams. Mm -hmm. And you saw how back and forth it was, which was the reason they weren't doing anything, because they were so unsure of what the result would be. 12 minutes in here. I'm still I still think they didn't really come out with an answer on that one. They know no. that Cop is going to be crazy in the back line. That invisibility gives him such good positioning, especially in this part of the game when he can be squished like that bug. And once he gets the Blade of the Ruined King, the assassination potential actually opens up. So wherever Maple Street goes, he's going to have to be a little bit careful that Cop's not waiting in the wings. <laughs> Always a fun thing to consider when you're trying to multitask, farm, look at wards, and then see a guy pop up next to you. 16,000 to 17,000, that war gets taken, or the war, yeah, the turret gets taken down in middle. That's three to one now. Like we said, Velocity may be down in kills, but they do happen to catch that early game lead usually. They're good early game, 1,000 gold. And we talked before the game saying the mid game is going to be a large decider in this one. There's no dragon to fight over directly, but even just Curse trying to farm up right now, being down three turrets to one, farming without the outer ring of turrets is extremely difficult for teams. And this is the mm -hmm. moment where Velocity needs to take an advantage over Curse. And really, you got to give contribution to NK Inc. for the early part of Velocity's game. His movement, his capacity to jungle, the early mm -hmm. dragon, it's consistent for him. And it's usually that reason. But, you know, he's choosing a champ. He's got a champion again that may not scale into the late game. It will be more utility. Maybe that's what Velocity continues to lack towards the late game. And everything in this Velocity composition is catered towards the mid game. Yep. 
Maple Street on Varus, since he's a bit of an AD caster as an as an AD hyper carry, with his spells, does tail off near the end of the game mm -hmm. when compared to Cop. So the mid game is where the AD carries need to sit. Even just Echo and Valros, mid game is when teams don't have huge amounts of magic resist. You got to kill people then with it. Right. Velocity has to win this game before 40. And we can see the positioning and a bit of respect there given from Curse. At least on the last dragon, they they wanted they wanted to see it was there. They tried to take top turret tried to come back on the fight, but they know Velocity, like you said, a little bit more powerful in this one. So Curse with their hard hats on, now back to this laning phase, knowing the Dragon Timer at least, since they had a little bit of vision on Velocity, could help as we approach that next Dragon. And I really wonder if Boy Boy's going to decide to fight Valros at any point here, since he's got that Spear Passage, and that's that natural counter item we knew he was going to have against him. Even if Valros rushed Magic Penetration, it's not going to cut through Boy Boy's tankiness. 113 to 107, still a very low farm game with all the mo the motion that has been happening around the rift on this map. 19.6 to 18.5, so we're looking at that favor for Velocity right now. They go back to pushing the lanes. The map is objective free since Baron really isn't there yet. And when a team takes out three outer turrets, they need to start taking control of the enemy jungler. Otherwise, you're just allowing the team to farm with you on an even playing field and eventually take the turrets back. Velocity's got to get some deep wards inside Curse's jungle so they can start making plays. Haven't seen too many moves from Echo. Velocity really says we no. want to fight in, in an engaged area, right? They have they have Rumble, they have an Ari. They want to get these fights back at Dragon over an objective. I guess it wouldn't be in their favor to try and fight right now. They're probably waiting for the Dragon. Yeah, if which hurts, right? Because they have to wait for mid game. So it's like it's mm -hmm. a, just a ticking time bomb that if they miss the next one, it's going to explode in their face. And I think Curse is positioning themselves right now to either catch Velocity in a Dragon, because sure, you can say, don't fight against Rumble at the Dragon Pit, but Curse has got a pretty good team fight as well. If we they just consider, up, if yeah. they can get that one good combo down onto Velocity, we're going to see a Dragon fight like we saw in the Cloud9 Velocity game yesterday, where everyone on Velocity just gets ripped apart at the start of it. It's not just a free win once they go for Dragon. Going for the very oh, far no. clan because he locks out Boy Boy. He says, "Let me in! Let me in!" Here comes NK Inc on the backside. Two games in a row we've seen that played out very well by the opposing cataclysed person. Yeah, Varro's got <laughs> just far enough away so Boy Boy couldn't hop in with Saint Vicious. Oh man! And since Varro's flash was actually still down yeah, for a just couple more up. seconds, it just came back up now. I think they would have killed him if Boy Boy could have made it in, but it was just a bit too far. We'll see what their rope is here. Boy Boy goes in for another one. Oh, I thought he punched Baron. That would have been some big damage. It's actually onto Vile Rose. It hits him again. Oh, he took so much extra damage, unfortunately. Just trying to ward, and that's one of the difficulties that Velocity has taking over the game. They haven't been able to find ward positions, and it allows Curse to jump on them when they're not suspecting it. Almost like it should make Baron worth more when you grab it. He's got kills and assists now. Tag. <laughs> <laughs> Looking for Echo. The ball's not there for the damage, and it looks like they, again, have, well, well, Velocity has good wards on it. We'll see what Curse can do. Well, one way to deal with the mid-game dragon fight against Rumble is to kill him, and then you don't have to worry about dragon fighting against Rumble. This could be a dragon for Curse. If Velocity can test this, it's a very dangerous fight. That was a big damage from Maple Street right there. The wave goes out, they all dodge it on that one. They get their boogie boards out. Back to Jackie, the piercing arrow damage is not something he wants to deal with. How did that miss? It looked oh like God. it was just on the edge. A three-man command shockwave. Saint goes in. He doesn't have the cataclysm, but he did get the flag and drag into the fight. Echo getting hit up. The expunge is still there. It's not going to be in range. He goes on NK Inc. with a flash. The dissonance in back will not slow his attack speed. He didn't get it down with the cripple. And it's going to be Bow Rose thinking he can get back into the fight, but he goes down as well in a three for one. And everyone but Saint on Curse gets away with the sliver. Velocity as they were trying to chase Curse around the bend, clumped up into a shockwave bubble combo. That's not the combo you would think about naturally, but it just destroyed Velocity and allowed Curse to get out all their damage, and that's the mid-game swing that Curse wanted. So many wards around that dragon. We said it last game, they have so many wards around it, it should be yours, but Curse mm -hmm. waltzed into that and walked out even happier. 6-2 now on the board. Curse grabs the lead back in terms of gold. They're still down two in turrets as we reach 18 minutes into the game. And like you said, without Vile Rose being there, it was the chance Curse needed to take. And having the wards down before that hurts twice as much because yeah. that was Velocity's game plan. And it got completely taken away that from them. That was the ticking Just time bomb. Not what they needed right there. Looking at these items. 
Already Saint going. Two of those cloaks, trying to get some magic resistance in. All the tanking that's coming out of Void Boy. That Sunfire Cape almost finished. You see Cop on the Vial Rose in the top oh. lane. We were just waiting, you sneaky rat. He snuck up next to him, and that's the fear that the Blade of the Rune King assassination twitch puts on. As soon as you try to just push up lanes, Varos felt a little safe. And it's funny because Varos has actually had pretty good games in the top lane since he started playing there on champions that no one thinks he can play. Everyone respects his rumble for the most part, mm -hmm. and now he's having his worst game of the split. They are going to focus that no matter what, over and over again. He's going to be a bit more uncomfortable than everybody else. If it's something you need to, if, if it's something you're looking for, then you can find it right there. We'll see if the team can get back behind him. We still have seen Bio come back very much so in these fights. He is also Rumble. He's done it on Shen, just to, just to make the fact that it's not going to be the Rumble ulti to do it. So we'll see what they do. His Curse looks again for another one of these kills in the top lane. I really wonder kind of what's going through Valrose's mind right now, just because you have a champion that you love playing so much. So as soon as it becomes available to you after mm -hmm. being banned out forever, you think, I know exactly how to play this guy. But... Once again, once you have a main that gets banned all the time, you actually stop practicing it. And that may have been what happened to Valros here, because he just doesn't have the comfort level. And the team, Velocity, doesn't have the comfort level playing with it since they haven't been allowed to for so long. Gonna have to work in the buddy system here. Every time this starts to happen, at least I know, you kind of want to get that more farm. You put yourself into that spot because you say, if I can get this, then you get ganked again. We saw it happen to him there. And now we see the NK Inc's going to kind of be roaming with him towards that top lane a bit before he backs. And it's so difficult for them to farm as well, just yeah. because of the 4 0 oh, 2 Twitch that is stalking his prey again and again. So close to even that Infinity Edge, and it it reflects in the play of Velocity right now. Despite being up in turrets, Velocity has turtled into their own base, and actually kind of giving up position in their own jungle. Oh, and Kang throws the ward down, actually hits the backside of the little lizard, so they are going to make it away with the red buff. Valros, oh, a very that. nice ultimate, but the command shockwave stops the re-engage. You can see a great flash Tempest coming in, slowing down Jackie, slowing down Edward, and they start to just demolish this fight. That is one way to get a team out of your jungle. You just go and kill them. That was a great equalizer by Valros there, and Curse completely bailed out because it was a fight they got initiated on when they were 4v5, so since Voiboy is off split pushing the other side. Cop is on the uh -oh. run. I feel Velocity is trying to stalk him down. No! Oh! You... That was like one of those things. You're at the school play. He's like, right behind you. He's right behind you. Grab him. They do get the hail of arrows and the play in. That's a big shutdown for Maple Street. And that's what Maple Street needed to get back in this game. He has to be able to create some late game carry potential. We know if Maple Street has a good game, Velocity generally wins. And this is a very close game that Maple Street has to turn into a good one. We'll see what he can continue to do here. We have said Maple Street has the variety to play multiple champions, so his skill set through the roof at times. And Varus is one of those high count champions he has been on along with his Draven. So definitely in his hands to carry this one if he can keep it going. The shutdown is only 1-0 and 2, but that came with a lot of gold. It accelerated him to that last whisper. He was sitting yeah. on about a long sword before that, and he could just buy it straight up. He only has 100 gold left, meaning if he didn't get that kill on Cop, mm -hmm. it would have been a whole nother trip couple extra waves that he had to farm, and he wouldn't have had that last Whisper for potentially this next Dragon fight that will be the second mid-game fight Velocity has a chance to take some control in. Jackie not feeling Zanya's like this game is it's really not a dive team to him. They're looking for cops, so he's going for that damage. He's going for the shield power and the Rabadons coming up with his next buy. As we look around, still Saint just stacking up the magic resistance, and he looks like he will be building up his team that bulwark next. It's absolutely necessary against Rumble Ari <laughs> to get that bulwark, which is why he has the double no magic right yeah. now, since he will eventually upgrade both of them. But he needed the personal magic resistance first, since he's always the one going in first. Oracle's being picked up here on Edward. That Oracle's being persistent now through death with its recent change. We'll see how they utilize that as they lose right now the bottom turret. But this is now with Baron up 23 minutes into the game, so there is the pressure of that on the map after any fight going awry. And Voiboy is again trying to sneak up from the flank here on Velocity. That's why Velocity's pulled back, because they sense him coming. This game has actually been a lot of Voiboy farming away from Curse, and then Velocity taking advantages for it. Voiboy needs to make his team fight impact felt if they want to make that farm worth it. It's so scary watching them that try goes. to get away. They keep punching up so much if St. Vicious can get it with the flag. Oh my gosh, there's Wombo, Combo. There's nothing else to say about it. Velocity gets destroyed.
that was so well executed by Curse right there. Flashing in for the left bounce, meaning Velocity couldn't get rid of him. And then, hello, Oriana Ball. Everyone got exploded. Ridiculous engagement. We now see the power that these guys are bringing to the table. The, the, the repetition of the Zack and Jarvan composition being used over and over in compositions today. And they make the bold call to run straight to Baron. The dragon was up, but and that was a fight in the bottom lane, but they realized they won it so cleanly. Yeah, like I said, They're if like, anybody dies Baron, here, this is bad. Let's go run across the map and try to take this thing. The only thing that could stop this would be a Maple Street piercing arrow. <laughs> From Saint, base. Saint's got a smite. He's getting a little low, though. Look, do not die to this Baron. Okay, he gets, oh it. my gosh! He actually almost got there in time, and that was without home guard, so he was trucking. Well, I still think that was a great call by Curse. Not that only was crazy. to make the fight happen, keeping up with Velocity as they were falling back, and then Voivo to initiate way in front of his team. They got the Baron afterwards. And we actually have a replay of that fight in the bottom lane just to see how Curse pinched them in and prepped yeah. this fight. It was clean. Voivoy flashes in to get the first knockup, and then he kind of pushed them out just so the Ar Oriana Ball oh. could take him back in. And, and the wave. Everything <laughs> else is just gravy after that. It doesn't matter how well Velocity tries to counter-initiate because three people got killed almost immediately. An amazing initiation we see coming into this game so far from Curris, and you have to consider, yeah, that's a team fight one, but that puts fear into Velocity. How do you dodge that? Because that Zack could miss, and then it's the Jarvan, or the Oriana Ball could miss, and they still have the Zack. There are so many options for Curse right now. Velocity's not going to want to push a lane like no. that ever again, because no. that just means Voiboy Boy can come from the flank, from behind them, and just take them out. It means they can't contest this Dragon, since Curse already had a Baron, and they know Curse has gained so much since that last team fight destruction. What's Velocity really going to do in the next one? Velocity is definitely going to hold onto their butts and go full force because it's what they need to do. Coming up onto 26 minutes, they're 6K behind. We've definitely seen worse. And at 26 minutes, 6K is sitting on that verge of the next fight will teeter way too much in the favor of Curse. So if they can break down the next fight or stop something from happening big, which is going to have to be after Baron, mm. Velocity still very much has a chance in this one. They got a lot of work to do, though. Yes. This is the mid game that has been the Achilles heel of Velocity, this right. entire split. They had the early game in control, and they had a mid-game team comp. Curse also had a very strong mid-game team comp, and Curse just outplayed them so far. We'll see what they decide to do. Looking at them, two minutes left on this Baron, so we'll see that spawning a good three minutes, about five minutes from now, if you will, all together. Mm -hmm. Jackie, you can see 57 kills, 62, that's 17 assists coming into this split, and really, while you're playing an Oriana like this, you can see the impact he has on helping the fights. The kills go to Cobb. He's really been picking up his game lately yes. as well with these Oriana plays. I actually expect Curse to think about diving or at least threaten the dive and dare Velocity to take them down. What Curse is going to do now is they're going to try to get six turret kills before their Baron is out, which means they'll take out the outer turrets and all these waves. If Velocity tries to defend the non-inhibitor turrets, that's when Curse has the opportunity to dive. There's so much strength in Boy Boy just charging up <laughs> Elastic Slingshot. You can see Velocity takes it into consideration. It's it's not a joke whatsoever because Saint can come over the wall. There are crazy things. Cop's going to come out of nowhere, and he's getting ready to look for that. This wave, Velocity doesn't even want to play with this. These are incredibly difficult turrets to defend, which is why they were kind of there for moral support, and then yep. they realized Curse meant business, and they have to just back away. Yeah, these outer turrets are pretty much, or they have Curse's name on them right now. If they wanted to go to top, they would do that without a minion wave. Ooh, Cop looking maybe to sneak get... attack? Thought he was trying. There's definitely a bit of crowd control. They can single him out. That was a big Yikes. hit there. Wow, that dissonance took about half of Evaniscus' health along with a sonic wave. They could have straight up killed Evaniscus. If Nijaki decided to use his Oriana right there, oh, yeah. it would have been a kill. But Curse wanted to save it because they want that to get a team, not just to support. Curse is sticking around here. They got a little bit left on this Baron buff. And because they're sticking around and not going to the other side for the other outer turret, I expect to dive on the next wave. There, there it is. is. Boy Boy from the back line. The Ballista goes in, but they flash out of it. I don't think it's going to be enough for Velocity here. The wave after the Cataclysm, after the Let's Bounce, and it's Saint taking the turn for his team. He gets the ball on him for a second, but it's moved for damage as well off of Nijaki. They continue the fight. Velocity's doing a perfect job at kiting. They need this turret to fight. They've done a good job, but they lost the turret, which means Curse is just too strong at this point. And even though their Baron wore off halfway through that fight, you could just see the strength of Curse in that fight. The Ballista comes 
missed. Oriana Ball yeah. hit nothing, but everybody else hit a whole bunch. Boy Boy was still bouncing around and had enough damage to kill nearly everyone on Velocity, or at least push them off the turret. And it was a good dive and call overall by Curse. And we can see just how slow this game has kind of gone. There are kills, we're getting to the late game here, but it's only two core items for Curse that they're fighting with right now. And mm -hmm. it's two core items that come into 30 minutes, you usually see the third one at least being pieced together. So the game is slow, but everybody's managing to fight at this level still. Yeah, well, if Curse is only sitting on a couple items, that means Velocity's is sitting it? on even less. Yeah, exactly. With all the roaming that happened, early on in the game, the farm totals were low, and since it was roaming without kills, it degenerated the gold value mm -hmm. overall for the game. The game time doesn't actually matter, aside from death timers and mm -hmm. the strengths of some of the right. minions. So, it's fine for these guys. It's the lead that matters. See in the Sunfire Cave, Void Staff coming in for Boy Boy here. He wants to add a, a little extra damage to here, and you kind of see those builds come in when you know you have that gold lead. Mm -hmm. He is tanky enough. Mm -hmm. Might as well build some damage, and he's got full, just the best penetration build he has. Yeah. The flat pen and the percent pen for magic damage are all multipliers to his damage. Since J since Zach has such high base damage and not incredibly high ratios, that is the highest damage build the Boy Boy can actually go for. It actually makes his Sunfire Cape hit for even more as well since it's <laughs> magic damage. All the pain coming from the blob right now. It's super unstable. Seven to three in turrets. Like we say, 11 are on the map. So you're looking four more in the eyes of Curse to drop down the base and then the Nexus. They don't need all of them, just the two in front of the Nexus right now. And even though Curse doesn't have the Baron buff this time, based on the success of their last dive, I wouldn't be too surprised if they try this one again. They know Voivoy can initiate from everywhere, and they know that they burn Echoes and Ebeniscus's flashes in the last team fight, so they have a bit of freedom to go in if they want to. This is getting a little more into a hectic gang too. We see the wards coming out now, but if you look at the map, hardly any wards have been placed recently. The oracles are out, but there's also nothing to clear. So these teams are like, we need to fight, we need to figure out how to stop Cursor now, mm -hmm. then we can ward. And both these teams remember the tremendous comeback that Velocity had against them when Velocity was mm -hmm. down eight turrets to two. They're actually better, at, better off in turrets this game is when they came back and won. So Curse is gonna, Whoa. I think, make sure they have a bit of poke before they go in, or they say screw it and oh, die. Oh, right to the back line! So much damage just went on to Maple Street. He's that dead. Void Staff pen build from Boy Boy crushed the AD. They are getting out right now, actually laying on top of that equalizer, but they're able to split it. Echo and team do a good job of stopping that for now, but it's still rolling into the base. That's one way of flying in, just go well past the remainder of the team. And because of the damage build, he was able to, him and St. Vicious, destroy Maple Street far away from the rest of the team. And then the other three weren't even really fighting. They were just taking the turret and the inhibitor, and they walk out of the base with another successful push. And we actually see builds coming up. Deathfire Grass, Blitch Bane onto Echo. So these guys will have, with that double AP comp, you're also going to get slower turret pushing. So that mm -hmm. will assist in that. If Velocity can do what they did last time, get that last kill, get the timers at 50 seconds in the death chamber and go for it. With Baron very low right now, 2200 HP, it's not going to be the death sentence to take it down. Snate, Saint nails the smite. There's a, there's a mouthful. That was another situation where the enemy jungler was dead, so there was no yeah. full risk of a smite still coming in. Smart Baron for Curse, and they've had smart calls really this entire game. Very, a lot of smart play coming from any team that's been in the lead today. They're not doing anything crazy. Yesterday we did see, you know, call back to a few of the dragon fights that went awry, but every team isn't pressuring their advantage. They're pushing it slowly and making sure it slowly gets there. They don't have to push anything after mm -hmm. a team fight, and they're knowing it now. It works out better, though. And we talked before the day, this is a big, big day for Curse. They win mm, two games, they move true. back to 10 and 10. Kind of a clean slate as the season moves on towards them. They also try to pull themselves ahead of Dignitas. They, they will pull ahead of Dignitas with this win. They'll tie themselves to COG. These things really matter for their position in playoffs and securing themselves a spot or a chance to go to the World Finals if they just secure themselves top six. And it's crazy to think you may hear your favorite teams, you know, saying, we hope to get second because Cloud9 is so far up there that that's what these guys are shooting for right now. And it's mm -hmm. going to be enough for them. Boy Boy and team trying to do that right now. 232 CS on him, 247 right on Nijacky. These guys are ready, poised to fight to get in to the back line. NK Inc. with the ward and the kickback, but St. Vicious does the same oh, thing. Wow. It's a pretty good engagement, a very split velocity team, not taking too much damage, but they're not giving it back either. They are being pushed around in a very chaotic fight. 
Yeah, and it's a double kill for Maple Street, but there's still a lot of curse power coming through. Whoa. Gotta see how this fight continues, because Curse still has a couple threats up. Oh, Flash coming in for Echo. We wanted to get that charm just behind Voidboid and Nijacky, but the Flash is now down. These guys are going to be working with their last inhibitor going down. As well, they got the bottom one up, so they're going to have to take that first, I guess. And that was kind of a fight without cop because to NK Inc.'s credit, he did get a great kickback mm -hmm. into the team, and they were able to burst down cop. but there's so much more damage between Voiboy and Nijacky that it still gave Curse inhibitor number three and their third successful base push in as many tries. So is this Curse just kind of keeping them on the ropes and playing it safe, or could they have ended by now? They could have ended if Cop didn't die that fight. All so. Right. It's not a bad thing that Cop died because they still got the third inhibitor and they still have some duration left on that Baron buff for the people who lived in that fight. As soon as everyone on Curse reses up, I expect them to run straight to the base and try to end the game. A few of these final builds coming out. Probably going to see some Elixirs start. Cool. Yomu is on Maple Street. May as well. May as well. Get that extra armor penetration. Crushing attack speeds. We'll see what they can do with that. Going for that all-out build. It is definitely coming down to the last and final thread here for Velocity. They are pushed down to their final two Nexus turrets. 9-3 to three on overall structures in the map. 18-8 to eight is the score. And a coming up on big gold lead. It's about 12. Yeah. It's actually kind of funny how Cobb had the pickaxe as he was moving towards the last Whisper. And then he also realized, wait a minute, no one on Velocity is building armor, plus I just died that fight. Let's start building Apache's Veil <laughs> as they move into this final fight. The Abyssal Scepter there for Vile Rose. The magic resistance being built on a Nijacker for these last fights. They don't want anything to give these guys the upper hand in auras or whatnot. That double AP can still do some good damage in this fight. The turret damage, however, is there for Curse still. Boy Boy trying to put himself on the front line. He is on the he's on the back, but looking for that ballista. Saint just walking himself in. They're they're getting dirt on the damage on the turret, but nothing's happening. There is too many minions in the base, and Velocity does not want to fight. Last dish effort. Velocity goes in when they lose the Nexus turrets. This is not going to go right for them, but there's no focus on the Nexus. They do get a few. A piercing arrow for the back line. A very nice shot, but it may be too much. Flooding the base are the minions of Curse. The Nexus will go down. Curse finally finds that win in a very well-played game. Curse played great in that one. 6 1 10 for Voiboy. Boy. 10 kills again for Cobb. Very aggressive style once they started having the lead. No hesitation about going in. That's how Curse wants to play. Watch yourself in there. You can see Velocity not happy with that. Vile Rose talking it out. There's still a smile on the face. You got to say, you know, it's kind of like that damn. That was, a, that was a good game. We got to figure out what happened there, though, because we did, again, have yeah. the early lead, and then Chris swung it real fast. And Vile Rose, in particular, getting the rumble that he's been wanting this entire split, and then.